Good. Hello, everyone. Hey, everyone. Good idea. Just a reminder, everybody, this is being recorded for played at a future date. And if we could ask you all to keep your, your microphone on mute during this recording session. And at the end of this, after Michael gets done speaking, we'll have an open uh, chat line and we'll be able to ask questions at the end. So if you could hold all questions till the end, we'd appreciate it. Make things flow easier. And then, of course, Michael, we would like for you to not be muted because we need you to That's be right. able to speak. Right. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like he hasn't done this before. 1400 times so we've talked to most of you it looks like you know it's we'll see if more people come but it's about what i thought would would show for this particular piece but the idea here is to get the ball rolling with regards to health care and any questions that you have before you come um because we found this to be very helpful we started our healthcare journey probably i think we started our healthcare journey long before we started the visa process and started looking at what the visa process was because as you all know with following our journey that my mother and family had uh, devastating health issues um, that were financially devastating as well as you know health issues so um, so that journey is very important to us so we're real excited to bring Michael today and allow you to figure out what direction you would like to go as you move forward. So let's get started. You, Michael, you and I had talked a lot about, you know, having you speak through the phases and, and when to start and the main questions that people ask you. Um, he has sent them all to me, but I don't know that I need to read them out. If you just want to start talking and educating everyone, that would be fantastic. All right, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, Alan, Leslie, happy to be here. Just just a short question. All of you guys are either in Madeira or on your way to Madeira. That's the idea. Whoa. All right. Good choice. Yeah, they are. They are all like we told them to mute. They weren't allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. When he asks you a question, you're allowed to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay. All good. Um, very well. So I'll try to walk you a little bit today through common questions that people ask us. I will tell you who us are. Is um, and uh, as said before, you're totally welcome to ask me whatever you want, uh, unless it's something very, very personal. And in that case just try to generalize the question and you're more than welcome then co to contact us in person us meaning either me or one of the people on my staff and we'll be happy to assist you with specific personal issues a little bit about uh, why we are here and uh, uh, why ellen and leslie chose to to have me here today um my name is michael uh, I am a medical doctor. My specialty is internal medicine. I am one of the founders of Serenity. Actually, Rita, my partner, and I founded Serenity uh, a little more than two and a half years ago. And what Serenity does today, uh, actually, we are a operational platform that solves literally anything and everything that has to do with healthcare in Portugal. Uh, it's a medical concierge service, uh, but not only a medical concierge, we are literally clinical case managers and uh, being that kind of a structure, we can support any decision, any hurdle, any concern, any need of yours prior to arrival, after your arrival, uh, be it something that is totally non-clinical or a true clinical situation i wake up one day i have a clinical issue what do i do next where do i go who is the physician that uh, is in madeira for example or not but i have to see how do i get there how do i schedule all of these things is what serenity does uh, we will talk today well uh, I've been asked to uh, kind of send a list of around 10 common questions or common issues 
that people uh, ask us about or we find important to clarify. And I divided it into several stages within your journey to Portugal. And if you allow me, I will take it through that. Would that be okay? That would be perfect. All right. Good. Great. You have the list. I don't remember it, so I can. <laughs> I can. I can. I, can I, you that. I don't have a problem yeah, with either. that. But the first one is, um, you know, at the beginning of your planning, which is where everyone in the group here today is. They're in the beginning of their planning. So, what the first question is: Can my health problems be well addressed in Portugal? All right. So yeah. So if you know, it, it actually helped me a lot because if everybody here on this webinar, this on this small webinar, are in the planning stage, let's talk about planning stage mainly, because okay. when you really come here, you will may you might experience different issues than I than the ones that I raised. So let's talk about planning. And okay. And the majority. On that. Is that okay? I think everybody on this group is well coming out of the U.S. or we got one Canadian, but whatever, the North America. <laughs> North America, great. Planning. Um, the question, yeah, first question is very, very general. Like, look, I'm coming into a new country. Um, none of us here looks like you're in the 20s. And naturally, we all, we all have a little bit of, of a background, a little bit of concern. Some might have some uh, health background, a concern with how do I continue doing what I'm doing in the States or in Canada. And the main question that comes up is like, look, I don't know what I'm facing. Portugal is a totally new country for me. I did hear that uh, the healthcare system is quite okay. So is it and the answer is yes we have uh, i mean we have on our hands more than 2500 people today with uh, literally on the average like 10000 problems right everybody comes with a little bit of a list we have not found a single problem that people came with or are coming with that cannot be solved in portugal it doesn't mean that it's kind of a magic. Okay? It's not miracle. It's not uh, the heaven for healthcare. It's not. But neither is the United States or Canada. Exactly. Uh, and what I'm saying is that there is practically not a single problem that cannot be solved here in Portugal. It just needs to be solved. It might. Uh, be necessary to solve it in a different way than you are acquainted with in the States. The major uh, take, actually, after this small uh, declaration is that everything can be treated. You just need to plan it ahead and understand how. I'll give you some examples. Naturally, the basic things of uh, a bit of hypertension, a bit of cholesterol, a bit of diabetes, or a, or a lot of diabetes, all of these can and will be solved in, Port in Portugal. In many aspects, many financial aspects, your medical issues and concerns will be solved much better because the government supports here quite immensely the treatment, medicines prescribed medications even those that cost in the states thousands of dollars per month most probably you will get it here for free the only thing is don't jump to conclusions and say all right so i'm having again as an example uh, a very complex situation i'm taking injectables that here in the states would cost me fifteen thousand dollars per month and michael said it's gonna be for free in Portugal. So here I am, I landed in Lisbon. Where do I get this for free injection? It doesn't work like that. There's a process to it. And as long as you plan it ahead and you talk to people that understand what they're doing and they understand how to uh, advise and help you navigate the system, you will get to be treated in a very, very decent way. Again, Thousands of cases, thousands of different diagnoses. We have not met a single one that we said, you know what, just don't count. There's no treatment for your problem in Portugal. 
This is important. Another very important thing, uh, and this is part of the explanation of the differences between systems. Many people ask us at your stage, the stage of planning, the stage of understanding how it all works, like, hey, I heard that after a certain age, you cannot be insured in Portugal. So first of all, this is not the exact truth. You can be insured in Portugal up to whatever age you want. Uh, the age plays a major role in how many companies would be willing to insure you. But here's the thing and here's the major difference. Not like in the States, a little bit actually more like in Canada. The gateway to healthcare, your the gates that open for you to act the access to healthcare is not insurance. Is the state. And hence, there's no question. The state does not limit, not age, not medical condition, the state accepts everyone. And this is very important to understand. Practically speaking, at the moment that you have been granted the visa, meaning the state have accepted, or has, sorry, the state has accepted you as a to be resident, you're on a freeway to the public healthcare in Portugal. And yet, as I said before, somebody would say again, ah, Michael said, I'm just coming with a visa. Where do I get my dialysis? It doesn't work like that. Nobody will charge you money for dialysis, but you still have to go through a certain process to fix and to formalize this eligibility. And what really happens is that the visa actually grants you the status of a legal to be resident. When you will arrive here and you will have your staff appointment where your residence will be formally approved, you will get this practical stamp on your residency. It will take a bit of another while, a bit of weeks, two months, it depends. I don't know how does it work in Madeira, you will tell me. How long does it take you to get a card, the residence right card? Right now? Well, once you have your staff appointment, you'll get your card usually within two weeks. At the longest, it's four, and it's they're running anywhere from three months to four months before you have your staff appointment, once you land. All right. So you guys are very lucky in Madeira because here on the mainland, in the big capital, it might take up to four, five, six, seven months to get the card, not to get the staff appointment, but leave that alone. <laughs> Never mind. After you get the residence card, actually working with us we will help you do it and you can if you want to try you can do it alone but you can be registered with the national healthcare system and get what is called sns number or in portuguese numero do utente and with this number this is your formal eligibility for care by the state i have to tell you a secret even before you have this number Nobody, no public hospital will throw you out of the ER if you walk in and you have a broken arm or a broken leg or just a runny nose and a fever. Nobody will deny treatment, right? But when you are legally and officially re registered, you're very, very done, even if on the second day of the registry or the day before you're registered, you, for whatever reason, need a new liver liver transplantation, heart transplantation, bone marrow transplantation, all of those things that would actually cause you to go bankrupt in the States, not in Canada, are here free of charge. This is very important. So people then ask after this explanation, people say, okay then, so why the heck are you talking all the time about uh, uh, private insurance, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. I'm actually good. Uh, why do I need private insurance? So here's the thing. First, welcome to Portugal. Not everything here works really with a good logic. <laughs> you have to be acquainted with this fact. Uh, part of this need of private insurance is a, um, is a manufactured reality. When you go to SAFE, what you need to present to them 
on top of uh, your lease agreement and the fact that you really arrived and you live in, in a place and you have a bank account and all of these things, all of these things, you have to present to them a solution, a long-term solution for healthcare. Theoretically, what SEF says, well, you could go to, to the national healthcare system and be registered. The thing is that at least on the mainland, nobody in the national healthcare system services would register you without your residence card. So you're kind of in a loop, catch 21. So the practical solution is let's just buy a private insurance. And when you present a private insurance policy to SEF, they're okay with that. Ah, okay, take the box, you're good. This is the formal need for health insurance. But this is not the true reason why we recommend people to buy private health insurance. The thing is that uh, regardless of the fact that I said so great words about the public system, this system works well only part of the time. And if I want to present it in a simple way, it works very well on the side of prescribed medications. Because first, there's a very good operational system. It's an e-prescription system that works all across uh, uh, the country and you know, works very well, no problem, no, unless uh, it's, a, it's not, doesn't have, happen often, but there are some short, shortages of, of medications. But even if a uh, drug is missing in a, uh, in a pharmacy, within three days, they will get it to you. The operations of the pharmaceutical uh, service here work very well. And as I said before, if you are registered with the national healthcare system, if you have this SNS number, every prescription that has your SNS number will be given to you with a great subsidy on the side of the state, which makes your life very easy. Actually, even if you go to a private physician, and he uses your SNS number on the prescription, you go to the pharmacy, you get it with a very discounted price. That works great. On the other, on the totally other pole of the uh, public system, you find all of those very complicated situations. If you need a quadruple bypass, you need a new liver, you have a, I don't know what, a very complicated neurosurgical intervention. You need to be 10 days in the ICU. You need a bone marrow transplantation because of your an acute leukemia. All of those sad things, what really happens in real life is that you skip bureaucracy. In those situations, nobody will drag you through bureaucracy and processes and give me this and give me that. It's obvious that you need an acute major intervention and at that side the public system works again very very well the quality of care the knowledge of doctors the equipment the facilities are good thing is that luckily none of us here and i hope not in the not in the past and not in the future would need those things those new livers new hearts quadruple bypasses and whatever what we need is just to go to see a cardiologist or a gynecologist or a dermatologist or to treat somebody our bad knee and when time comes to have a total knee replacement this is what we need and in those small or bigger routines unfortunately the public system fails it is overwhelmed overcrowded um, not manned as necessary, which creates a situation in which just to, to go to see a cardiologist or an endocrinologist for your diabetes, whatever, you might have to wait months after months and then be directed to a specific place to which you belong, to which the system assigned you, and you cannot choose your own physician. And at the end of this very long period of waiting, you might step into an office of a doctor that would look at you and say, no follow English. 
I don't speak English. Instead of that, you can and you will, really, I mean it, you will use the private system. Because in the private system, you can choose the physician that will see you. You can get to the same cardiologist or dermatologist in days and not in months' time. Right? You don't have to be, you don't have to have a referral. So you don't have to go first to a primary care physician to have a referral to a specialist, whatever. You can walk into somebody's office and say, hello, I need a new heart. Which is a question if you really need it or not, but you can. <laughs> so everybody would practically use the private system and this private system would happily take your money but if you want to spare yourself from paying out of pocket you want to buy a health insurance and that's the story why people buy private health insurance in Portugal yeah let's real quick because you touched on it but let's just clarify um, before we get down is getting their prescriptions, will they be able to get the ones that they're used to in the United States or an equivalent that's approved by the Portuguese government here, which I think that you covered that and the answer was yes. Or the answer is yes, as I said before, as we didn't, uh, exactly like we did not come across a clinical situation that could not be handled in Portugal, we did not come across medications that couldn't be provided in Portugal, except for two. One of them is actually very popular in the States, and this is a uh, preparation for, for hypothyroidism based on thyroid preparations uh, from pigs. This doesn't exist in Portugal because it wasn't approved for, uh, by, by the European Union. So we'll have to kind of go back to synthetics. And the other one is a certain uh, medication that I don't remember exactly the name for ADHD. And again, it was relatively easy to find an ADHD specialist that would put a client on a good substitute and we never heard about problems. Okay. So and, then um, what about, you talked about pre-existing conditions. We talked about age and being able to buy insurance as you age. It's just that as you age, it becomes more limited, which we've talked about that as a group before. Um, what about pre-existing conditions? We got the same issue with that, correct? Right. So the major pitfalls of, uh, of private insurance in Portugal uh, are two, actually. And, and I want to explain the logic uh, better understood. As I said before, your main gateway in the eyes of the state and in the eyes of the insurer, your main gateway to healthcare is the public system. And hence, private insurers created their product looking at their own products as a nice to have thing. It's a kind of a rider, it's a nice, it's, a, it's an add on, it's a top up, it's wh whatever you want to call it. And being a nice to have top up, being a luxury, not really necessary add-on, uh, the insurers might create a product that is not comprehensive enough. They might create a product that would be, for example, limited to a certain age only. They might create, and they have created a product to which you buy today at the age of 60, but at the age of 65, suddenly you will receive a letter saying, thank you for your business, we cannot insure you anymore. So age is an issue. Yeah, It's actually, it's an issue from two sides. The age that you join insurance might be problematic. Not all insurers will accept all ages or would provide a full insurance to somebody above a certain age. One, two. Some insurers and some products would be limited to your, uh, to kind of, to be staying on the product after a certain age. Pay attention to that. This is a regarding age. And you asked Leslie about uh, uh, pre-existing conditions. This again is an issue with the very vast majority of insurers in Portugal. Uh, insurers do not like to cover pre-existing conditions. And then the next question normally people ask me, okay, but what is a pre-existing condition? Guys, 
it's everything. Everything that you had in your past and everything that you that you would put on your uh, questionnaire or declaration to your insurer, everything will be considered a pre-existing condition. So can and I ask a question on that? Is if sure. you take those pre-existing conditions and you say, and, and I came to you now before I was leaving the States and with my medical records, would you be able to help guide, and I know you guys are not brokers and you do not sell insurance, just so that everybody knows that you know, you'll use a broker to actually purchase your insurance. Um, but would you be able to help to validate insurance programs that will work based upon what I have? and my age so that i'm not absolutely so this is decision. exactly what we do this is exactly what we do each and every client of ours whether having insurance before joining us or not having insurance would go through this kind of uh, a session normally with me we will look into the existing insurance in portugal or the future insurance that he's trying to purchase understand first the background understand the capability to buy into an insurance that would cover as much as possible everything because this is what you're looking for and then we'll tell you okay the insurances or the insurance plans that can be relevant for you are a b c d e f and g and now you're free to go to to whoever you know is a broker or we will connect you to brokers that we know and we are acquainted with and then they will send you their proposals we will help you understand the proposals because many of them uh, are written in portuguese this is the the regulation here we will help you we will analyze the proposals with you we will analyze your wills and expectations together and we'll come to a conclusion that will support you on the long run that's the idea serenity at the end of the day as you mentioned is not a broker we're not selling insurances. We will work with you as clients with whatever insurance you have. Our obligation is just to make sure that you're not making mistakes. That's it. And then what about, I know that we've talked before, which this is always an interesting conversation, and usually Americans get this one right off, is the difference between an actual insurance and then a card that you can get it like ACP, which gives me a discount. It's like a medical discount card really I, they 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 sell it with a terminology that sounds like insurance but it's just a discount card um and then like the one that you buy at the bank thank you for that it's very very important um the thing is, and, and you actually nailed the the problem in your question and the problem is not exactly the fact that you have your insurance products and non-insurance products, but that are that are sold as insurance. The, the main problem is the terminology. When specifically, person from the states hears the the sound of of the word healthcare insurance, he has in his mind a whole product like in the states. Mm -hmm. comprehensive product yes no dental yes no vision but it's a comprehensive product this is my gateway as an american my gateway to healthcare in portugal health insurance the same words totally different meaning and hence when somebody sells you a health insurance or worse than that a health plan yeah, be that's careful the that's the thing that you were meaning in portugal plan of the sold health plan is totally not an insurance it's a discount card and they are selling it with a nice pitch it has no age limit you can buy into it whatever age you are you don't have an age an age limit to stay with the card it's open in i don't know what thirty-seven thousand providers you pay for that three and a half euros per month now people are quite surprised but hey we heard everything in portugal is cheap so this probably is cheap as well great let's buy into it no don't i mean do if you want sure. but know what it is it's only a discount card and you will get a nice discount sometimes when you go to see a physician instead of 100 euros you will pay 70 and you will be happy 
But when it comes to hospitalization and a total knee replacement that costs 25 or 30,000 euros, you will get a discount of 2,000 euros. This will not help you. This is not an insurance. And even, by the way, when somebody is selling you insurance, you will say, hey, I heard some guy speaking about health plan and whatever, and people will tell you, no, 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 this is insurance. Be careful what you're buying, and this is with regards to what you, what you said about the bank. The bank sells you insurance, because the bank, banks and insurers work here quite uh, closely. But pay attention. The very vast majority of insurance is sold by the banks do not include do not cover pre-existing conditions not all of them would be age uh, uh inclusive kind of all age inclusive please be careful mainly if somebody offers you a health plan or a health insurance be it the bank be it ACP, the automobile club be it edp the 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 electricity company, be it the guys at the mail, the ones that connect you to TV and internet at home, don't buy into it so easily. Say, okay, I'll think about it. Ask somebody who knows what is it about, what does it really provide me with, and then make a decision. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Let me ask you, let's talk about um, when I'm coming, if I need to know, if I have a very serious health condition, and how do I know if I'm going to be able to find somebody that should carry me on the island of Madeira? It is a very small island. And then what would happen if there wasn't a specialist here for me? I'll answer that in a second. Just before we leave this insurance okay. thing, I, I want a, one small remark because it's, it's a common mistake. Remember, guys, you are all in this planning uh, uh, stage. When you submit your paperwork for visas, you oh, need to yeah. present as well a health insurance. It's totally different insurance than the one that I've been talking about. It's a specific uh, travel insurance for Schengen area. It has different setup, different price, different meaning, different logic. It's a different product. You need two totally different products in this journey remember this let's go to what happens in madeira so look madeira yes it's an island it's an island with relatively okay capacities in terms of public hospitals and several private clinics okay capacities meaning that probably in i mean more than 85 90 percent of the times both systems and this is the uh, oops can you still hear me yeah yep. yeah all right just froze for a second and both systems public and private in madeira will be uh, enough to support you with your needs be advised as well that when it comes to the public system if they understand they cannot treat you they will fly you to the mainland okay i don't know if it will be done immediately whatever it all depends on the availability of, of, uh, of the plane weather you name it but it's their responsibility to bring you to a hospital that can treat you so i'll just give you an example i am almost absolutely sure that um a uh, intervention for an acute cva invasive neuroradiology will not be available on Madeira but hey it's not available as well on many parts on the mainland okay might be available in a single or two hospitals in Lisbon one in Porto but if it's a, an acute heart attack if it's something else that is a, an acute surgical intervention whatever you will be well treated acute cases Elective cases, specifically if you work with us, we will tell you how available and how well the treatment will be provided in Madeira. And in cases of need, we will tell you, look, it is not an emergency. It's not urgent for today or tomorrow. Take your time. 
arrange your flight to the mainland. We will arrange somebody to see you in Greater Lisbon, which normally you fly to, right? Co correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and this will be it. So in terms of healthcare, again, the, uh, the major issues that can pop up will be well treated even in the death. Okay. Then um, a lot of people worry that they can't find their kind of doctor or they just can't find one that they like. It, I mean, it, to speak to that. I and mean, it, it is very important that you have someone that you can connect with and that you can work with. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is actually uh, <laughs> the lack of those uh, make dreamy doctors, you know, from uh, from Chicago Hope. How, what's no? It's from uh, Grey's Anatomy. Grey's I, Anatomy. Those those uh, great people on Grey's Anatomy. You ain't gonna find them here. <laughs> Actually, the very reason that we exist is the fact that again, Portugal uh, has good physicians, but not everyone speaks English. Not everyone has the time to sit with you and, and you know and sit for a consultation of 45, 60 minutes. As I said before, the system is quite overwhelmed. Even in private hospitals, the set of mind of primary care physicians is a bit different. They look at you at a, and not at you newcomers, at everyone. As a walk-in patient that just came and he has a, sim a, a simple pro a problem that we need to solve right now, they look at you less as a long-term client of yours, etc., etc. This is part of the issue. Another part of the issue that although many Portuguese physicians, not many, all of them are well-trained, updated, all of that, the bad manners, what we call bad manners, or or the client experience thing is a little bit less embedded in them than in in people that you met in the states or in canada it would be a different experience and this is why so many people have hard time finding somebody that they really have chemistry with so first to that to that i always say serenity is a good substitute for that because you will always work with a single case manager, all of our case managers are medical professionals, all of them are actually nurses, all of them are backed up with physicians, me included, or the rest of my team of physicians. So we are there to support your day to day. And at the end of the day, we assist you with uh, finding this proper physician that you would like. In many cases, it's a little bit of a trial and error. It's a new country, new region new world so it doesn't necessarily mean that you will like the first or the second physician we got your back on that until you do and even if you don't we got your back <laughs> so then i have a couple more that are near and dear to my heart uh talk about pain management and the difference between a pain management doctor here versus in the states Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, first of all, I personally think that, and, and you guys know it, this is not, no, not a secret, but pain management and then opiates and all of this story has gone a little bit too far in the States. Everybody knows. Uh, and yet, pain management is a crucial thing. The people that live with chronic pain don't live high quality of life, and they deserve it. So what we did uh, quite a long time ago, we have in-house a pain management uh, specialist. Great guy, actually. He, his, his background is oncology, uh, so he understands pain management. And he's very, uh, very good at what he does. He does the vast majority of consultations, naturally, because we serve all the country. He does the very vast majority of his consultations online. But, again, just remember, pain management is available, be it with oral medications or even with, inter with interventions. Pain clinics exist. They are good. I have to tell you the truth. I do not remember if we are working with a pain clinic 
in Madeira. Just don't remember that. But we have several very good interventional pain uh, uh, practitioners on the mainland, in Porto, in Lisbon. So if you even in Madeira well, and you have to fly, if fly someone in. needed, they could work with it via a web conversation just like this. If, yeah, if as long it. as long as one doesn't need an intervention. A, uh, a block or something like that, an injection. Everything that is medically managed can be done online with the proper prescriptions and whatever. There's a whole story of how do you get medications, specifically how do you get those supervised medications before you have your SNS registry. But as I said again, there is a solution to everything. You just need okay. a different solution than what you're acquainted with. I know. And so the, um, that's why I wanted you to speak to it, just so that, you know, as, as we all age in life, we know that these things are going to come down the pipe and you might as well understand what the options are. And so that takes me to the last one, nursing home and assisted living uh, availability in Portugal and kind of how that works just kind of fast and then we'll kind of wrap it up so everybody can ask questions. Sure, of course. Sure. So uh, this is still an unmet need, a largely unmet need. Uh, nursing homes exist here, but we all hope not to get there. We do think that during our life and during our aging, we would very much like to have a supporting either community, assisted living solution, all of these, nursing at home, etc., etc. This, I have to tell you, in a general manner of speaking, is still an, uh, a great unmet need in Portugal. It is supported today by the public system. Remember, I told you the public system is failing. It fails as well there. The care is not enough. It's very partial. Uh, but we do see many kind of uh, many things start to, to develop because this is an obvious need of the population and people would pick it up. Even today, there are a lot of groups speaking about the need, about the possibility of funding, about the possibility of building it in. So guys, come to, to Madeira. You all seem very healthy to me. So until you need it, you will have a solution. That's true. That's true. And there, there, is, there is a couple options here on the island. They're just, they're not exactly the same as we're used to. There's not like assisted living. But yeah. there is nursing facilities, private ones. And so if you want to, we'll put his information and how to get a hold of him and his team, you know, in the Patreon for everyone so that you have it. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But unless you have something else that you want to add right now, I'd like to open it up to let everybody jump in and ask a question. And it looks like Chris Medeiros already has his hand up. So Chris, <laughs> let's you go to... for that. <laughs> All right, my question is, uh, we're going to be traveling in May to Madeira for four weeks. And my question is, would you be able to help with like travel insurance the best? Or do you help with that? Absolutely. What would be needed? Again, to be as said before, we aren't selling insurance, but we have enough connections with good brokers that work mainly with expats. So we just, out of experience, we know what works well here and what can be provided. So just contact us. We will accordingly connect you to the, to the broker, understanding your specific needs, and that's it. I think one of You'll your brokers is win, win Insurance, so that you'll know, and that's the same broker that we have on our list. So, I mean, I know, I'm sure he has many brokers on his list, but it is the same one that, that Alan and I use. Um, okay. you know, it's only on one that. of them. Only one, as Leslie said, only one of the brokers. There are many. Uh, okay. uh, if we're talking about brokers, just another small, Small recommendation, please take it with you for the future. When choosing a broker, it needs to be a broker that will be proactive and fight for you in case of a, of a conflict with an insurance. This is why you need a broker. Right. And then, so the next person that has their hand up is Michael. Hi. You just got to unmute yourself. There he is. Uh, Michael, I have several questions. Uh, you mentioned the age restriction for private insurances. 
I'm, from your experience, let's say I'm 80. Doesn't mean that I won't be able to get private insurance. I mean, I bought it today when I'm like 70 or 69. Will they throw me out at age of 80? No. So the thing is like that. First of all, this is exactly the, the point that I was uh, uh, pointing out. There are insurers that would still sell you some lame products, not at the age of, uh, before the age of 70. Okay. But then they will throw you out at 75 or 78. And there are several insurances that would sell you an insurance up to the age of 70 and you, they will never throw you out and as of today actually as for today not of today but there's only si one single decent insurer that will take you on board at whatever age and will never throw you off the plan and today, who is that it's only one this is mgen okay that's the one that we always tell you about so that you know yeah um yeah so MGen actually... will always tell you and there's no limit of staying with mgen very decent insurers i truly hope that somebody else comes into the game because i believe that people even if they are 72 should have a choice but it doesn't depend on me second yeah. question I, I can ask more questions right uh, yes absolutely uh let's say I will start applying for D7 in October. How long before that we need to contact you to get the insurance? Thank you for that question as well. Not only because of insurance, but because of mainly because of planning your transit of medical uh, concerns. I always say to, the, to anyone who asks me these questions, it's never too early. Talk to us today. If we understand from a short conversation of 10 minutes that you're good and we have nothing to contribute to you now, we will tell you, hey, all good. Talk to us, please, in three months, four months, whatever, right? Uh, about insurances, normally I would say uh, prior to submitting the, uh, the documents, at least then, if you haven't spoken to us before, give us a call because this is the time when we can just help you with the insurance you need for the application and normally it would be more or less in a good time to hear about your medical needs and if we need to start doing something active now two three four months before you really even have the visa it's still a good time to start working together so it's better to directly call your company yeah 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 another question uh do private insurance doctors handle only office visits or they handle also surgeries or they send you for surgeries to public system no so it actually it's a, it's a nice question because it's again this is part of the difference between systems here in the states whatever uh, private clinics and hospitals would normally provide you a very comprehensive answer to everything can be office visits, it can be surgeries, it can be procedures, invasive, non-invasive, imaging, blood tests, you name it, everything. Uh, but at some point, specifically if you were diagnosed with something very serious in a private hospital, they would rather divert you to a public hospital to take care of them. Because in many aspects, specifically the more complex situations, cancers, etc., 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 public hospitals are better prepared than the private ones. And then you might get, imagine, uh, God forbid, yeah, but somebody might have a, a, a diagnosis in a private hospital of acute leukemia. The next day, the next hour, is transferred to a public hospital because private hospitals do not treat acute leukemia. Example. And okay. Last very very short question. That MJ, for example, that insurance. Do all doctors accept it? Private doctors? Because no. let's say I could not find doctor in Madeira and I want to go to Lisbon. So no. Each and every insurance has their own kind of network. It's not exactly like it works in the States. It's not a network of Kaiser. For example, Kaiser Permanente that has their own, they are kind of an HMO, not only an insurer 
financial enabler that allows you to work with different positions. Here, insurance is a financial enabler. They have agreements with certain hospitals and clinics, and others do not work with this insurance. So there's a difference. How do they, how does the financial support of the insurer works if it's a direct agreement within with a provider within the network, or it's a reimbursement scheme with a provider outside of the network. Yeah. Talk to Thank us you. later on, I'll explain. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, sure. it, that was interesting because that threw me for my biggest loop when I was going through the process six months before we were coming because I kept could, couldn't understand if I buy this insurance, is it only good on the mainland? How do I? How am I sure that it's good in Madeira and at the hospitals here, and at the private facilities here? Um, you know, and they kept well, telling yeah, me, "Don't worry is, uh, about it. Don't worry about it." And I was worried about it. You know, and we really have not is, had any issues at all. So first of all, here's a first-hand uh, uh, testimony: no issues. But if you really want to learn about it, this is exactly what we do. We will we will explain to you whatever insurance you come up with or whatever question, we actually translate what is written in your policy, sometimes only in Portuguese, into real life. Right. How does it really work? This is our job. Right. Which is good. Okay, so who else has a question? Anybody? No? All that we answered everything you ever needed to know? Uh, either I was very yeah, boring just, or I was very clear. Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, just just a general question. Uh, if I'm a resident and I have private insurance on Madeira, um, does that cover if we're traveling in France or Germany? Or do I have to purchase an additional international policy for those? Uh, it largely depends on the on the policy you have purchased. Um majority of insurers here would provide you some kind of a reimbursement on direct medical expenses when traveling abroad up to a certain period of time. It again differs between 30 days, 60 days, 11 days, or whatever. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Each and every one of them have their own, has their own kind of small policy as for expenses abroad. What's very important and what we explain to our clients always is to pay attention. Those, those uh, coverages are only for direct medical expenses, as if you went outside of the network and up to a certain limit. Meaning that, and this is the, the example that I'm only, always talking about, you had your, your good time here, it's winter, you want to go ski in Switzerland, great, you go, you ski, you break your leg. You go to an emergency room, it costs you, I don't know, let's say 500 euros, you will be reimbursed more or less 200, 250, 300 euros, but that's it. If you have to shorten your vacation, if you have to, if you want to fly home business with your leg raised, whatever, this comes out of your pocket. That's the main reason that we always say, guys, travel as much as you want. Buy yourself a travel insurance. It's relatively cheap. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and to be really honest, this is silly. But you can get travel insurance, and he won't like this from the bank, like on your app <laughs> as you're at the airport, and you go, "Oh, fifty cents, done." You know? It's not the best, but yeah, oh, covered. good, exactly. All oh, good. Just read. What is it that you're paying the fifty cents for? Right, because fifty cents or one euro. No, no, it's okay. 50 cents or one euro, one euro and a half would not make the difference. The difference will, will be made when you find out, when you really need to do a claim, and you will find <laughs> out that you paid 50 cents for nothing. That's and you true. would say, damn, I should have asked and maybe paid one euro, but get something. That's, that's the, a that's little the better. <laughs> but really, the main thing is make sure you have insurance when you're traveling back to the United States, because that's where you're going to go bankrupt at. <laughs> I mean, serious. I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but you know, it is the way it is. <laughs> so, yep. Russ, I see you have your hand up. Do you want to jump in and unmute yourself? Sure. So, um, I guess the qu question I have uh, is: Are there uh, sort of walk-in clinics for things like you know, you've, you've got an, uh, an earache, and chances are you probably have an ear infection. 
you need to get antibiotics quickly uh, to prevent that from, you know, progressing, you know, rather than, oh, well, I can get an, I can get an appointment with my PCP, but not for three weeks. And by then it's too late. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to Portugal. No walk-in clinics in Portugal. Uh, there are the private hospitals emergency rooms that normally, uh, normally, would many times have very short waiting periods. Uh, for those specific issues like an earache or whatever, fever, they're very good because normally what they have uh, is GPs or, or family practitioners in the emergency room and not necessarily surgeons or orthopedic surgeons. So they are better for that. Again, part of the reason that we exist because with this small thing, you call your case manager who's a nurse, can do triage, can connect you immediately to one of our physicians. And if, it's all, if, it, if it can be sold over the phone, sold it over the phone with a prescription, or she will tell you, you know what? What we know from our experience is that the uh, cool for loose or whatever are very quick on that. Let me check online even the waiting periods. Ah, it's only 15 minutes. Go there now. Call me that everything is sold. Fantastic. Muito obrigado. Obrigado, Bel. Anybody else? Corey has her, her, her. Does Corey have his hand up? Oh, I see it. I'm sorry. Jump in there, Corey. Now? Oh, we chased them off. Anybody else? Okay. Pretty easy. Then do you want to tell them real quick how to get a hold of you? And then I'll also post it, like I said. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, very, oh, very simple. Oh, there she is. There she is. I'm sorry. We were having trouble getting it unmuted. Um, thank you, Michael, for, for taking our questions. Um, I do have one question. Um, my husband has pre-existing condition um, for kidney cancer and also melanoma. You said there is only one type of insurance that will take uh any type of pre-existing and ah, is that yes. he he had surgery so the cancer was taken care of he's he's completely cancer free on both accounts but is there like certain conditions they will accept or they will accept across the board you just pay more in premium all right so thank you for the question actually uh funny enough covering or non-covering pre-existing condition doesn't influence the premium for whatever reason uh, and yet it, it the uh, what is important if there's only a single uh, company or more than one company that would look into coverage of this uh, case which is such would depend on age when or since when your husband is cancer free and the existence of uh, prior insurance. If you're coming from the States, probably you had it and you have it for for very long periods of time. Yes. Uh, and this is exactly what we do. We look into all of those specific criteria and at the end of the day, we'll tell you, yes, only one, maybe two, maybe three. There is, always remember, there is this certain engine company that does accept everyone at any age with any pre-existing conditions but it's not as i said before it's not so simple they do have some waiting periods they do have some restrictions specifically to the first year of insurance and remember as well another thing this is this is where this clinical uh, uh, analysis has to take place some people are still on treatment and whatever on adjuvant chemotherapy whatever it is and these medications are literally or not literally very little uh, are covered by the insurer just because the logic behind it is that the state subsidizes everything as i said before and that way some people with very important treatment for cancer for example people that are on hormonal treatment for uh, for prostate cancer or whatever, you name it. Come here, they say, oh, okay, Amgen takes me in, great. But no, not great. They will take you in with a waiting period. And the treatment issue of your cancer 
is not covered by Amgen because they don't cover medical uh, treatment more than 500 euros per year and it will cost you more and there's another way of getting this treatment again I'm not going to go into the complexity of each and every case, but another right. time, another way without trying to hard sell us, this is what we do for a living. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. And then, are, are we good with everybody else? No more hands up or anybody waving. Okay. I hope everybody learned something. If nothing else, I learned some stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. I'm happy that you're happy. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's so important to me. <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody for being here. We'll put all the, in the notes, all the information. If you want to contact them to get going on their program or to just ask questions um, about the program, because we didn't go into the, there's different levels of the program that they offer based upon your needs. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful evening.